We are ready for our first, I think you warmed up. We're ready for our first act, second half. Ladies and gentlemen, you ready? You ready? I'm not sure for me, just take your time. Please welcome the wonderful Socrates. Keep it going there for Ken Parsons. Hi, Ken Parsons. So, everybody, how you doing? Good. Hey, Seth, I heard it. My name is Socrates. I am an American. Yeah, thanks. One of these days it'll turn, I don't know when, but uh, I'll keep checking back with you guys. So I've been uh, living here in the Netherlands since about 2009, and I uh, really love living here. It's uh, safer. <laughs> and uh, so I've been trying to learn my Dutch. Uh, uh, you don't really have to learn Dutch here, but sometimes Dutch is thrust upon you. I recently was forced to learn a new word, and that word is aangereden. <laughs> Which means to be ran into. Uh, I'll use it in a sentence. It was, Ik ben aangereden door een scooter klotzer. <laughs> Which means I got ran into by a guy on the scooter who was an asshole. <laughs> and uh, basically, there's uh, a thing they call feet pad. Have you heard of these? And it translates loosely into bike path. Pretty actually tightly into bike path, too. I thought it was self explanatory until the car was driving on the bike path. And uh, I thought that was odd. <laughs> And then the scooter, also driving on the bike path, but he was looking at the car. And I uh, came around the blind corner, and then there was a scooter in front of me. And I was going to say, you know, to the car and the scooter, this is a, a bike path. You should not be driving on it. Uh, but what I said was, ah! And then I smashed, and then there was a flying part, and that was fun. Like, you know, like the song, you know, fly like an eagle, till you crash. And then, you know, the arm breaking part happened, which kind of really sucked. Um, you know, in the Netherlands, they say if you go to a doctor, they give you paracetamol. You know, brain cancer, paracetamol. <laughs> the uh, ambulance guy, he offered me fentanyl. Yeah, not paracetamol. No, you're like, this is a fentanyl kind of situation. <laughs> I'm an American, so I said, I said no. Because uh, I know that fentanyl is a short trip to a heroin addiction. You know? you know, I'm cool with the heroin addiction. I'm not against it. Just waiting for a little bit later in my life, you know? It was like a later scene. So I, I originally said no to the fentanyl. And then my shoulder said, take the fentanyl. I listened. And it uh, didn't help. Actually, no, not, not impressed with fentanyl anyway. For an addictive drug, horrible. Nope, no. I got to the hospital. They offered me morphine. Uh, I said yes. And these people know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Morphine, five-star drug. <laughs> they offer me morphine, more morphine, which is more morphine. <laughs> what it sounds like when you have the morphine. Oh, morphine. And you guys say yes, because yeah, I like that shit. Uh, it helps, you know. And uh, got Oxycontin. I've been on Oxycontin now since about mid-March. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to test the boundaries of addictions. <laughs> it's fun. I'm feeling better. I'm feeling a little bit better, you know. And uh, I asked the doctor, you know, what's the prognosis with, you know, my shoulder, basically. And they said that this is what they call a halos uh, and pentaca situation. <laughs> Which, if you don't know what it means, it doesn't help if you understand the words. Uh, <laughs> because it means, oh, well, peanut butter. <laughs> yeah, it's not, a, not helpful as a medical diagnosis in any way, shape, or form. Uh, so I asked if I could get a second opinion, because, you know, I paid that 355 deductible, so... I'm going to a psychiatrist, because it's free. <laughs> and so I talked to a different doctor, he was a little more optimistic, and he said, uh, it comes good. <laughs> if you've ever been to a therapist or a doctor, some of them will say the stupid thing, it comes good. It's not even a sentence, you know what I mean? It's not a helpful feedback, except it's only one time in life when it comes good is useful to hear. And that's when you're shopping around for a male prostitute. <laughs> How's that work? Right? Comes good. <laughs> so it's like, uh, they call this conservative treatment, by the way, uh, because I didn't get a cast, no hips, just this. And uh, it's another way of saying the Dutch are cheap. <laughs> you know, kind of strikes home. <laughs> but if I had fallen at the crucifixion, same exact injury, they'd have done the same thing. Strap a vine around me, little opium. <laughs> try to stay off of it, you know. It comes good. <laughs> but, uh, 
So like I said, I've been living here since 2009. I've been trying to do my Dutch. I actually took some classes with Ken. I can highly recommend him. He's fun. Yeah. But uh, every country, you know, has got its own little unique things, you know. And like uh, in America, you know, if you ask an American best country in the world, they still say America. Yeah. Completely unaware of the irony, you know. <laughs> But uh, you ask, like, you know, a Pakistani guy, he'll say Pakistan. If there's an Indian guy here, he'll say, no, no, it's India. But if you ask it, a, a Dutch person, best country in the world, they go, hmm. <laughs> the Netherlands? Hello? <laughs> no. You know, yeah. Eh? Yeah. yeah, it's a great country. I mean, the weather sucks, you know, and the, the food's no good. But other than that, you know, it's a great place to live. <laughs> And one of the reasons is the, the, the quintessential Dutch word, you know, of course, is gezellig. You know, the one Dutchiest of all Dutch words. Because it starts with a chuch. Ends with a chuch. It's got a zell in the middle, which is fun. You know, but gezellig, if you don't know, it means a warm, wonderful, kind of cozy evening. Yeah. Uh, this is a gezellig evening. Oh. And everybody here is making a gezellig. Especially you. <laughs> but, uh... So it's something we have to do as a group. You can't really be chazelic by yourself. You talk to your friend, what did you do yesterday? Well, I went on a boat with a couple of friends. It was chazelic. You know? How about you? I stayed home and masturbated. It can be fun, you know, but it's not exactly chazelic, you know? I mean, unless you do it in a big group. Because, you know, that can be, that can be chazelic. But uh, it is like a, like a, are you Dutch or where are you from? You learn like it, right? Where are you from? Greece. Are you Greek? I, I have a little bit of Greek on my side. Yeah. yeah. Now this is embarrassing for me to ask you because my Greek isn't but so good. But this segues well. In American, not that we don't speak English, we speak American. Because you know, you know how the difference is when there's an English person on TV, they put subtitles in American. You know, because this guy does English in English. You know? Like a French person, they're on there. No subtitles. No need. But in Greece, what's uh, like in American, we have like the word for your little sugar pie, your sweetie, your honeybee. Because if you love something, make it fat, give it a heart attack. <laughs> what's a, a good Greek word for my little sweetie honey pie? Hey. Yeah, good hey. cool. It's still, it's a sweet sounding word, you know. Because the Dutch went with shkatcha. <laughs> That's another great word for you to learn, shkatcha. Yeah, shka. The hell is this word for my sweetest favorite thing in life? It doesn't make any sense, you know? I prefer the word ouchie, which is a little onion. <laughs> ouchie. But it sounds nicer, my little ouchie. We need beach in my ouchie. See, it's such a nicer sounding word, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe it's just my own ears, but that's what I'm thinking anyway. <laughs> but uh, the weird, one of those weird Dutch things that they do that I still don't understand is they mix their tobacco and their weed together. You know, because it burns better, or lasts longer, or it's cheaper. Or there's nothing like the taste of cancer. <laughs> I'm not really sure, but it seems to me that if this is, you know, makes sense, you got that eight percent beer. You know, you could water that down by half. You know, it lasts longer, go farther, a little cheaper. We do it in the U.S. We call it Budweiser. <laughs> Mix it down a half again. It's Bud Light. <laughs> It works. We sell make a lot of money with it, yeah. So I've been trying to like improve myself slightly. I've I've got up to the T Rex phase, and uh, so this is slowly healing, by the way. But I'm a little embarrassed because like I'm always having to try to stretch my shoulder back because it doesn't really work. So I'm worried my my neighbors are thinking I'm practicing my Nazism. <laughs> but uh, so I've been trying to figure out ways to make money because uh, I don't, and it, it requires it. And uh, so I've been trying to work out you know, a way around the system. And I, I found a loophole, actually, in capitalism. It's called stealing. <laughs> you can steal stuff, right? And you don't have to work, you know? But it's, it's hard because people will come after you, you know? So I've been trying to steal easy things, things that are like down to my level, especially now. So I've been trying to steal that walking stick that uh, blind people use. Well, hear me out. They never see it coming. <laughs> All right. I don't think it's worse income, from there, you know? Basic income for artists in Ireland. Okay. That's cool. Blind ones too? No, but that's cool, right? I suppose. Is I this think. about a blind guy with a stick? Because no, this is. I know, but like, I just thought it might be cool. So. Appreciate that. It is cool. Thank you so much. 
So anyway, this black guy was walking down the street, and I went up and I stole his goddamn stick because I'm like that. <laughs> I know it kind of screws it up now, but we're going to try with it, or should I give it up on it, you know? <laughs> it's hard to say, you know what I mean? Oh, look up. We'll, we'll pretend that was urban. I'll go to a different thing. Because I don't think it's going to work anymore. <laughs> so it's like uh, one of the things with... Uh, I was in Greece recently. And I was hanging out with my family. And uh, hanging out with a bunch of Greek people. You know, it's weird because Greek sounds like an argument. You know, even if they're really... Because we're passionate. You know what I mean? And if you don't get the words, it's just pa pa pa. You know? And, uh, you know, Greek, you speak it in the front of your mouth. It's, you know, popular, but, you know, it's a lot of lips and such. You know, of course, Dutch is in that throat. So everything is a ha. They love a good ha. You know, where English is none of that stuff. You know, you can break your jaw, have it wired together. It's not a problem. Almost anything you can say, not a problem. You do not need to inflect or otherwise. You cannot shut up an American is what it comes down to. And uh, my cousin asked me for something, and I handed it to her, and she said, thank you. And without thinking, I said, kach kadan, or kach, which, you know, means pleased to have done it, basically pleased. And she said, what? And I said, you know, I said, kach. And she, she thought I was having a stroke, you know? <laughs> and uh, I had to explain what it was I just said to her, and I said, you know, it's kach kadan, and everything. it's Dutch. And by then, my family is all gathered around, and, you know, they're all listening, and then they start mocking me, you know, kach <laughs> I thought they'd be proud, you know, that I could actually speak a little bit of Dutch, but, you know, they just make it fun. They said, when I spoke a little Greek, they said I sounded German, which is painful, you know, as an American, as a Dutch, as a Greek, all around the book, painful as hell, you know what I'm saying? So, but life is like that sometimes, you know what I'm saying? You, uh, <laughs> you think you're going to go to a spa, the next thing you know, you, you spend some time like this, but, uh, you know, life has its ups and downs. I'm working on an cotton addiction, and that's kind of nice, you know what I mean? If it, it's sleeping better. <laughs> so uh, my little ouches, uh, all I can say is, uh, for the most part, uh, I think like a lot of expats, I moved to the Netherlands for the food. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm staying for the weather. <laughs> Thank you so much. My name is Agnes.